Greetings students, today we are going to learn about one of Australia's leading financial services company, National Australia Bank. Let us know this company in a much better way. National Australia Bank, abbreviated NAB, branded NAP, is one of the four largest financial institutions in Australia in terms of market capitalization and customers. NAB is ranked 17th largest bank in the world measured by market capitalization. It operates across 10 countries serving 8.3 million consumer and business banking customers and over 2.3 million wealth management customers. NAP operates 1,808 branches and service centers and 4,656 ATMs globally. NAP has a AA long-term issuer rating by Standard & Poor's. In 1893, National Bank Limited was formed. Up until 1st October 1981, it continued to trade as a National Bank of Australia's Limited. Only after the merger with the commercial banking company of Sydney Limited did it become known as National Australia Bank. In 1858, Alexander Gibt, a Melbourne gentleman, enlisted Andrew Cruikshank, a local merchant and pastoralist, to raise the capital to establish National Bank of Australia's headquarters in Melbourne. The legal work establishing the bank was performed by King and Wood Malisons. Cruikshank became its first chairman while Gibbs left after being passed over for the position of general manager. The bank opened its first branch in South Australia the same year. The bank opened a representative office in Tokyo in 1946, later upgraded to a branch in 1985. The bank's overseas interests expanded more rapidly in the 1970s. It opened a branch in Singapore in 1971 and representative offices in Jakarta 1973 and Hong Kong 1974. It took minority interest in merchant banks in these locations at the same time and in Hong Kong established a 50-50 joint venture merchant bank with Mitsubishi Bank and Trust but withdrew from these arrangements in 1984. Its first U.S. presence was established in 1977 with a branch and an agency in Los Angeles that closed in 1993. In 1982, National Bank of Australia Limited merged with the Commercial Banking Company of Sydney Limited to form National Commercial Banking Corporation of Australia Limited and subsequently changed its names to National Australia Bank Limited NAB. Client has accelerated the bank's core banking platform upgrade dubbed NextGen, which is replacing legacy systems which are up to 40 years old with an Oracle-based solution. UBank was reported to be the first beneficiary of this project. On 25th November 2010, NAP suffered a system malfunction resulting in the failure of accounts processing. While NAB operates in several jurisdictions globally, it earns the bulk of its revenue from its Australian operations. The bank owns two retail or commercial banks in the UK, Yorkshire and Glidesdale. In NZ, it operates BNZ and in the US, it owns a small agribusiness focused bank called Great Western. The business banking and wholesale divisions of NAB have offices in London, New York, Hong Kong, Singapore, Tokyo and Shanghai. These are aimed at serving the needs of corporate and institutional customers which include market risk management, example foreign exchange or interest rate, hedging, trade finance and bond issuance. The banking industry today is uh, extremely challenging. It is a industry facing massive structural pressures. That's actually in transition from being a very much a staid environment to something that's got to be something quite different, quite dynamic and quite um, sophisticated in the way that it works and operates. The changes and challenges in the banking industry launched a season of internal scrutiny inside NAB, National Australia Bank. The result? NAB's leadership resolved that the best way to secure its future and serve its 12 million customers worldwide would be to overhaul its core banking systems. To that end, NAB began a bold season of transformation in 2007, one that has gained the attention of analysts and competitors around the world. It's about uh, working together, it's about agility, it's about reactiveness to regulation, which we knew was coming, and it was about economics. We are now operating in a very different environment to where we were, say, five years ago, where there was consistently high growth, 
particularly credit growth, and that manifested itself in quite strong and sustained earnings in the banking sector. In a low growth environment, we are not going to be able to grow our way to profitability. We're going to have to fundamentally become more efficient. Most of NAB's inefficiencies were linked to outmoded IT, an ongoing problem for many financial institutions. We had massive issues with our legacy platforms. Most of our core banking systems were built last century. There was only so far you could continue with a, a, a patch it tactical response to that. It was getting to the stage where it was unsustainable. And so NAB set about changing its IT infrastructure, focusing first on the front end functions, the customer service space. But soon came recognition that transformation was needed in the back of the bank to strengthen and align the true engines of the business, risk, treasury, and finance. Divisions that had been operating in silos, relying on disparate data. The traditional organisational barriers and systems barriers and information barriers existed, so there was a huge driver to start to get that better. I worked in uh, a risk management division of our personal banking division, so literally a division within a division. There have always been these plugs in the data because we haven't known any better. We haven't had full visibility. In the new paradigm, when we share data, we share an analytic capability. There'll be no question about who's got the best data because the data will be the same. Better data across the banking divisions has sparked new business initiatives and protocols at NAB that will enable employees to gain insights previously out of reach. In 2008, NAB invested $33.5 million in corporate responsibility initiatives. Its target is to spend 1% of cash earnings before tax in this area. In 2009, NAB became the largest fair trade accredited workplace in Australia through purchasing fair trade tea, coffee and hot chocolate for their offices and retail branches. In March 2010, NAP stated it expected to save nearly $1 million in annual power costs from a $6.5 million tri-generations plan at its main data centre. NAP became one of Australia's largest carbon neutral companies in September 2010. NAP ranked equal first among financial service companies in the global 500 companies in the 2010 Carbon Disclosure Leadership Index. During this period, NAP emerged as a major sponsor of Australian rules of football, both at grassroots and elite level. It supports OSKIC, an initiative to improve young footballers, as well as the NAP Cup and Australian Football League pre-season competition, the NAP AFL Rising Star Award and the AFL National Draft. Other significant sporting sponsorship included the Saucerous and the 2006 Commonwealth Games. Support is also given towards community group volunteers around Australia. In recent years, NAP has provided financial support and relief to drought-affected farmers and helped in the clean-up of flood affected in Queensland and Victoria. From 2008-2010, NAP is sponsoring the South Sydney Rabbitohs. NAP has also sponsored the Sheikh Femi Alt Iman Scholarship, designed to help strengthen the links between NAP and the Muslim community and enables an undergraduate student to continue postgraduate studies in finance and economics. In 2004, NAP discovered that as a result of unauthorized spot trades on its foreign currency, options DEX losses totaling $8.360 million had been covered up. Investigation by Price, Waterhouse, Coopers and the Australian Prudential Regulation Authority highlighted a need for cultural change. Losses were a result of failed speculative position where the traders falsified profits to trigger bonuses over a number of years. In order to actually generate the reported profits, the traders speculated on the US dollar, betting that it would rise against the Australian dollar and other currencies. In 2006, two former NAB foreign currency options traders were sentenced on charges brought by the Australian Securities and Investment Commission ASIC and incurred jail terms. The Irish subsidiary of the bank, National Irish Bank, was the subject of a six-year inquiry carried out by inspectors appointed by the Irish High Court. They established that National Irish Bank had engaged in overcharging its own customers and tax evasion schemes prior to 1998. 
Mr. Justice Peter Kelly, an Irish High Court judge, commented following publication of the report, the edifice of banking is built on a foundation of trust. On the inspector's findings, there was a breach of trust. The operation was carried out over a period of years in a deliberate fashion. The Director of Corporate Enforcement subsequently applied to the High Court to have nine senior managers barred from being an officer of any company. So, students, we got to know about the various aspects of National Australia Bank. Hope you must have got useful information about the company. Have a nice day ahead.